Now, many times you watch the show, and I thank you so much for that. Please know, I don't take it for granted. I don't take it lightly uh, that you allow me to come into your homes and into your living rooms and your kitchens to share the Word of God with you. But I wanted to take some time these next couple of weeks to sit down with you and just have some personal teaching sessions. I want to talk to you about um, different things to increase your spiritual life with God. It's so important that we know how to live and how to live according to the word of God. Uh, so many times you hear it and you see me preaching and teaching and that's great, but I just wanted to take this time to sit down with you and talk. So for the next couple of weeks, you'll see me talking, uh, but pick up the phone and call me. We're, we're still here, still available to pray with you at any time you need. Uh, the number is toll free, 855-326. 2255. It's toll free and we will definitely contact you back if we don't pick up right away and we'll pray with you. Uh, if you want to leave a testimony, a praise report, please feel free to do that because we want to talk to you. I want to get to know you. I want to know who you are and I want to help you on your spiritual journey and your spiritual walk with Christ. I, I get it. It's not easy, but guess what? It's possible because with God, all things are possible, right? With God, all things are possible. So get excited because it is possible. Again, pick up the phone. Call me, 855-326-2255. This is Dan Ministries. If you want to write me, do that. P.O. Box 439-332, Chicago, Illinois, 60643. And you know me. I'm Dr. Darlene Allen Nichols. All right? So what I want to talk about today is trust. Very simple. You hear it, you know it, um, you're familiar with it, but I want to get it drilled into your spirit, what it is to trust God, how you have to trust God, why it is important to trust God. And I'm going to give you some scriptures around that because we know that the word of God is how we live. That's how we, um, we abide. That's what we live in. And that's what we go with. That's what we use as our roadmap uh, to make it in this world. So I want to talk to you about trust. So there's a couple of scriptures that I want to share with you. Grab a pen, grab a piece of paper, sit down with me for the next few minutes and let's talk about trust. If you have any questions, write them down, call me and we'll get an answer to you. Guess, guess what? We will get an answer to you if you have any questions, but I want to share this word with you so you'll get it. So the first scripture is Psalm 20 and 7. Psalm 20 and 7. And the word of the Lord says, some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord, our God. Let me just stop there because sometimes when you're reading the scripture, it's very difficult for you to understand the scripture, but I want to break it down to you um, because when it says some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord. Back in the biblical times, um, they, when they had war, they would fight with chariots and horses. And the armies that had the most uh, prestigious chariots, they would have chariots that were gold. They would have um, um, horses that were fed the best meals that were strengthened. And they would have the best armor for their soldiers. And, and so those armies would put their trust in those chariots and those horses to win the war. So when you see some trust in chariots and some in horses, that means that when they were equipping themselves to fight, they built their horses up and they had the best chariots because in order to win, you had to be able to run fast. You had to have the best armor. You had to have the best chariots that could take you where you wanted to go. Okay. But now for us today in modern times, we trust in things. 
So what that paraphrases to mean is for us today, we trust back then they trusted in chariots and horses. We trust in our cars. We trust in uh, things, our finances, our jobs. We look at our jobs as our sources. We look at our jobs as if I don't have this job, I'm going to lose it. I'm not going to make it. But here, the second part of that scripture says, but we will remember the name of our Lord God. What that is doing is pointing us to God. So don't trust in things, in man, in materialistic things, because things will fail you. People are human. <laughs> People will fail. People make promises that they cannot keep. They intend to keep them. Don't get me wrong. They do. They intend to keep their promises, but sometimes they just can't. And why? Because they're human. But guess what? God never, ever goes back on his promise. If he said something, he is going to do it. So we must trust in him. So let's look at this. What is it to trust, to trust, to trust? When you look at trusting, hear me well, stay with me. This is good stuff. Trust is to have confidence. Trust is to rely or rest your mind in the integrity of a thing or a person. To trust is to relax in the fact that you're gonna be okay. Uh, it is to be sold on, all right? You're sold on the fact that this will happen, that my job will get me where I need to be. You're sold on the fact that when I open my doors to my business, the people are going to come and I'm going to be a millionaire. You're sold on the fact that I'm going to be in five years, I'm going to be married and have children. You're trusting in that. You have, you have trust in the integrity of it's going to happen, okay? When you have confidence in it, you have trust in it, you're sold on it. And when it fails you, it takes you into a tailspin. <laughs> when you lose your job, it takes you into a tailspin. In other words, you don't know what to do. You just all of a sudden, you just walk out. Oh my God, oh my God, I can't believe it, I can't believe it. I lost my job, I lost my car, I lost my house. I don't have the money that I need. I don't have the wealth. Oh, what am I going to do? Because you put confidence in those things, okay? But here, this scripture says, but we will remember, we will remember the name of the Lord our God. There's another scripture that says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are safe. So the Lord never fails. It is not within his character to fail. It is not within his character to change or to let you fall or to dangle a carrot in front of your face and not give it to you. That is not the character of the God that we serve. So why not trust him? Why not trust him when you know him, you can trust him. I wouldn't tell this story. Um, my husband and I, we've been married 22 years and he'll probably come on here sooner or later. <laughs> we'll do a show with him as well. 22 years we've been married. I have a wonderful marriage, two beautiful sons, 20 and 14, EJ and Austin, hi babies. Um, and when we got married, I had trust issues. I was always wondering what he was doing next. And, you know, is he, oh, am I good enough? Does he love me enough? Does he, I was always wondering, am I going to be okay? Is he going to keep loving me no matter what? Because I had been in relationships and had been hurt, as most women are, men as well. You go into relationships, they leave you, they hurt you, and you have a broken heart. And what you do is you um, make the next person uh, suffer or they have to become a victim of your hurt and your um, insecurities. So I remember talking to him and I would be like, you know, where, where you been? Where you going? You know, I had these trust issues. I was going, I'm just being very transparent here. I had these trust issues 
around is he gonna cheat on me does he love me and this and the other and i remember him saying to me listen darling i love you i love everything about you and i am going to be here for you now he asked me a question he says darlene we were maybe five years into our marriage have i ever given you a reason not to trust me i had to think about it well, you know, you're human and you're a man. And he said, but have I ever given you a reason not to trust me? And I had to think about it. And after I did, I said, no, you haven't. He said, well, let's play that out. Let's see how that works. Let, let, let's ride on that for a little bit. And, and, and if I give you a reason not to trust me, then we'll go down a different path. But, but let's just stay there and see where that gets us. He said, can you promise me that you will trust me as long as I give you a reason not to, as long as I don't give you a reason not to? I said, okay, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll ride that up. That sounds fair to me. That sounds fair. Here we are 22 years later, or 20, 20, 19, 18, whatever, years later, and he has still not given me a reason not to trust him. Now, he's not perfect. I'm not perfect. No marriage is perfect. Please understand that. But if you're going to trust or if you're going to mistrust, at least let there be a reason in the thing, the person that you're not trusting. Does that make sense? I know it does. Call me if you got questions, 855-326-2255. If God has not given you particularly, specifically, a reason not to trust him. Try trusting him. It just might work in your favor. Okay? It just might work in your favor. There's another scripture in the psalm. Stay in the psalm. Psalm 13 and 5 that says, But I have trusted in thy mercy. My heart shall rejoice in thy salvation. This is David saying that, you know what? Um, if you read that, you'll see that he complained. He was having, he was pouring out his heart. He was pouring out his heart. He was, he was basically saying, you know, what's going on? God seems like you're not with me. Seems like uh, I'm, I'm out here by myself. But his complaint soon turned into a comply when he remembered the goodness of the Lord. In other words, I started out complaining, but when I remembered your goodness, and I remember the fact that you have never left me alone, that my trials only come to make me stronger, then I must comply. If God brings you to it, he will bring you through it. Okay? Okay? Always remember that. So he basically was saying, I am trusting in the mercy of God. I am having complete confidence in the mercy. He says, but I have trusted in thy mercy. And because I've trusted in that, my heart shall rejoice. I'm getting excited because you've never left me, God. Now, that does not mean I'm not going to have some lonely days. That doesn't mean that every day is going to be peaches and cream doesn't mean that every day I'm going to be smiling and happy and up and bubbly. It doesn't mean that I'm not going to have trials or tribulations. It doesn't mean that I'm not going to have days where I cry, cry, cry. It does not mean that I'm not going to have days where I hurt. But what it does mean is even though I have those days, even though I have those difficulties, even though I have tears, I have a God who will comfort me in it. I trust his mercy. I trust that he won't leave me. I trust that he won't forsake me. I trust that he knows my heart. I trust that he's got me. So when I'm crying, when I'm hurting through pain, through tears, I trust, I have confidence in the fact that his mercy endureth forever. The Hebrew word for mercy is chest, C-H-E-S-E-D, which basically means his loving kindness. I trust in loving the loving kindness of God. I trust that his mercy 
will not let me be alone and by myself. So it's important that you trust. So I ask you, who do you trust today? Who do you trust? Here, we started out with the scripture. Some trust in chariots. That's stuff. Materialistic things. And some trust in horses. But we'll remember the name of our God. We will remember the name of the Lord, our God. He is mighty. He is strong. He is magnificent. He is ever loving and he is all knowing. He knows where you are. He's got you. He's protecting you. He's covering you. He's keeping you. He hasn't forgotten about you, no matter where you are or what you're doing or who you happen to be with. Whatever the situation is in your life, you must be confident enough to know that I trust God. Even in this, I heard somebody say it like this. I would rather be in the storm with God than be on the dry land without him. I would rather be in the midst of a storm and God is right there with me than to be on dry land and no storm is going on, but God is not there. I need him and I trust him. Do you trust him today? Can you trust him when you can't trace him? Ah, oh, can you trust him? When you can't trace his hand, when you can't trace his plan, can you trust him? Because he's sovereign. He sees you, he knows, and he's got you. So when we look at the trust series, we are trusting in God. That's the first thing and not materialistic things. We are trusting in the mercy of God. His, we're trusting in God, that's number one. His mercy, that's number two. And then the third thing I really wanna get into your spirit is that we're trusting him with our heart. When you look at the heart, the heart is what you need to sustain life. So many people have hearts that are not trusted. You're not trustworthy. You, you're not trustworthy and you don't trust because your heart isn't it. But God says, trust me with your whole heart. All right. Scripture to back that up would be Proverbs 3 and 5. It says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. And if you look at it further, the next scripture says, in all thy ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Acknowledge him in all your ways. Well, what does that mean, darling? What are you talking about? Dr. Nichols, uh, acknowledge him in your ways, your methods, the way you live, how you behave. Agno let your ways acknowledge him. And he'll direct your path. He'll lead you. He'll guide you. I promise you, he never fails. I promise you, let your heart fall in love with him. And you will see that he has got you. You will see that you are not by yourself. The God that we serve is big enough to hold the entire universe. But yet and still, he's small enough to be your friend. He's, he's wise enough to be, have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with you. He's wise enough to speak to you when you speak to him. You say, I don't have a relationship. I don't know. God, the God of the universe, yes, the God of the universe will still speak in a still small voice and tell you he loves you. Ah, oh, wow. Who wouldn't serve a God like that? Trust in a God that never fails. Trust in him as opposed to your materialistic things. Trust in his mercy and trust him with your whole heart, okay? With your whole heart. What is in your heart will ultimately come out. If you don't trust God, it'll show. If you don't trust him and you don't love him, it'll show. It, it's just evident. It's just, it's life. If you don't trust him, it'll show. But if you do, it shows in everything you do. In other words, I'm saying to God, listen, I'm an ambassador for you. 
I'll do whatever you tell me to do. And when it gets rough, I'm still going to be there. I'm not going anywhere because I trust that you love me. I trust that you got me. I trust that you know where I'm going. I trust that you've got my future in the palm of your hand. I trust that I'm not in this by myself. I trust that you're unfolding things very easily. I trust that you're going to go before me and knock down the barriers or the obstacles that try to prevent me from getting to my future. I trust that you're going to hold me. I trust that you're going to dry tears from my eyes in my weak places, in my low places. I trust that you're going to be with me and that you're never going to leave me. So trust is all I want to talk to you about today. I want to know, what do you trust in? Do you trust in God or do you trust in your stuff? Do you trust in God or do you trust in your faith? Do you trust God with your heart? Do you trust his mercy? Or do you trust your job more than you do God? Hmm? Think about it. Pick up the phone and call me. Call me now, 855-326-2255. I want to talk to you. I want to pray with you. I want to know where your heart is. I want to lead you closer to my personal friend. His name is Jesus. And he loves me. And he loves you. And again, we're going to be doing these because I want to talk to you one-on-one -on -one where I can just sit and chat with you and tell you of the goodness of the Lord and tell you how I make it. I trust God. All right, let's pray. We're going to pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this awesome series today. We thank you for this awesome time of sharing today. We thank you for those who tuned in. It's not by accident or happenstance that they tuned in, but they dialed in. They tuned in today. They're watching. And we pray, dear God, that you would arrest their atmosphere. We pray, dear God, that you would touch someone like never before. We pray, dear God, that you would show yourself mighty and show yourself strong. We pray that you would allow us to trust in you in every area of our lives. God, we know you're able and your blood is sufficient. You can do anything but fail. And so God, we pray right now that you would touch your people right now. Touch, lift, heal, set free, deliver, turn things around, show up, show out, heal bodies, change natures, bring families together, save loved ones, save God, heal, deliver, and set free. And most importantly, mend our hearts and allow us to trust in you. We give your name the praise. All of the glory and the honor will forever be yours. And it is in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen and amen. Don't forget, I'm going to keep coming to you like this. We're going to do a part two of this. I'm talking about trust. When you trust, you'll have peace. That'll be a part two. How about that? <laughs> when you trust, you will have peace. So part two of this will be the peace of God. Oh my God, how about it? You like it? <laughs> I love it. The part two will be the peace of God. Pick up the phone and call me. 855-326-2255. It's toll free. 855-326-2255. I'm Dr. Darlene Allen Nichols. This is Dan Ministries, where guess what? We love you and we care about your future. It's a bright future. It's an amazing future. And it's our endeavor to touch one life. You can mail me if you want to. Let me give you my P.O. Box. Dan Ministries, P.O. Box 439-332, Chicago, Illinois, 60643. All right. I pray that you were blessed by this series of trust. And we're going to talk about part two. And that'll be the peace of God. When you trust him, you will have some peace. <laughs> Hallelujah! <laughs> oh, I get excited when I think about his goodness. The songwriter said, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out, what? I hear you. Hallelujah! I praise God for saving me. Thank God for saving us. And we're excited to come into your homes again, into your cars, into your living rooms, into your bedrooms, your dining rooms, your kitchen, your cleaning, your sweeping, your doing clothes, but we're with you. And we want you to know that God's got you. All right. This is Dr. Darlene Allen Nichols with Dan Ministries. We'll see you next time. And always remember, we love you and we care about your future. Bye-bye.
God bless you. We pray that you were blessed by the life-changing Word of God. Call us toll-free at 855-326-2255. Our staff is available 24 hours, 7 days a week. You may also write us at Dan Ministries, Inc., P.O. Box 439 332 Chicago, Illinois 60643. Please visit our website danministries.com for upcoming events, covenant partnership opportunities, and media products. We would love to have you attend a service when Dr. Nichols is in your city. Again, thanks for joining us. Until next week, always remember, Dan Ministries loves you and we care about your future.